you, you need to invest in your health. The greatest resource you have is your emotions. Mm -hmm. Not even so much your time. Time time is right there. But again, if you're physically unhealthy, mm -hmm. your business will suffer. Awesome. Well, welcome to Own the Exit Podcast again. I'm your co-host, Caleb. And this is Aaron Leatherdale here, co-host. So absolutely. excited to have you guys today. Yeah, this is really cool. So we're here in the studio today with Malachi O'Brien, Dr. Malachi O'Brien. He actually has a doctorate in digital media. Digital is, media. There's <laughs> a lot of people that do online marketing and all kinds of different things, social media, and he actually has a doctorate. It's pretty. So, it's actually it's pretty crazy. impressive. I, I don't know if I know anyone else who has a doctorate <laughs> in digital media, so it's super cool. Malachi yep. founded, founded his own business, Malachi Media. It serves a lot of nonprofits and businesses in advancing their digital footprint, their online platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the cool things, I know Malachi personally, we're good friends, and uh, one of the cool things, he just about a month ago, right, completed a Guinness World Record yep. where he ran 153 consecutive marathons. That's a marathon a day for 153 Every day. consecutive days. It's unbelievable. While running Seven a business. Days a week. <laughs> while running a business and he's got four kids. Five kids. Five kids. He's got five kids. He's the pastor's a church. Yeah. I mean, just how, so I don't know. What makes you so awesome that you could accomplish something like that, Malachi. I wish we could ask my wife that question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and thanks. I'm honored to be on the podcast, by the way. Yeah. I have no doubt that, you know, these conversations are going to be helpful because there's so many people that, that are looking to learn and grow because growing brings fulfillment. Yeah. You know, not so much doing stuff, but growing, pressing through things. So, you know, when you go to the marathons, the challenge intrigued me. When I, disco mm -hmm. I discovered that there was actually, I discovered actually there was a, a lady runner, Jackie Hunts Buzma, who was a blade runner, who was actually in the process of beating the women's Guinness World Record. And she lost like half of her leg to cancer years before. Hmm. And that's what made me go research. Like, mm -hmm. is there, a, what's the Guinness World Record for men for daily consecutive mm -hmm. marathons? And that's when I found out the men's record. I applied. Part of that inspiration came from a, from a conversation with Tony Robbins which I've been pretty open to share that in interviews with different people, John Gordon and others. They said, you know what? I'm up for a challenge. And maybe it was partly because I had enough failures in my life mm -hmm. that I thought, you know, I need something that potentially could be life-changing. And trust me, running mm -hmm. a marathon every single day, <laughs> outside to be specific, mm -hmm. in the yeah. winter, in the Midwest, <laughs> was definitely life-changing. Wow, that's amazing. So talk about some of those like that overcoming a failure thing. Cause uh, you know, a big motivator obviously just said was, you know, you felt like you'd had enough failures. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, and it's just, so I tried every day as I was running to kind of just think, cause you, when you're, running, you're in your head and heart for five, six hours plus, sometimes more, sometimes less, you think about a lot of things. And one of the things that really kind of resonated with me in the running, and I think it would resonate with any entrepreneur, anybody who's, you know, trying to break through a barrier is that what stops most people is never the external conditions. You know, the market, you know, how many people they're serving with, working with, it's always internal things mm. that stop them. Mm. That's always so good, them. yeah. You know, when I was running the marathons, it wasn't the weather that was gonna stop me. It wasn't going to be the critics online. And trust me, there were some critics online. <laughs> there was some major critics. There always are, right? Um, failure is a feeling. Failure is not it's when I look at something and I perceive it as failure, then it affects me. And so part of it is we have to change our mindsets from, you know, there is no, again, there, I know it sounds like a cliche. There is no such thing as failure. There really isn't. There's just things that I can learn. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the best thing that we can do truly is, people have said it, learn from others so you don't repeat mm -hmm. the same things in your life. Yeah. I've had failure. Failure as a parent, failure as a business owner, failure. I mean, I've had times in business where I realized I lost that client because of me. Mm. It wasn't because of them, mm -hmm. it was because of me. Mm. I'm at, I'm, everybody's going to encounter challenges and they have to learn how to break through them. And I promise you it's a mindset more than there's anything else. So wow. failure is not something to avoid, mm -hmm. it's something to anticipate. Now, mm. if you're scared of failure, you hate failure, then probably entrepreneurship's not for you. Well, right. You can't yeah, want right. success and not realize you're gonna have failure. Yeah. Those, those are two competing values. 
Like you're gonna have, if you want success, you have to embrace there's gonna be times. And you yeah. Through. I love what you said about that because I think like in failures, it's so easy to dwell on that, you know, or I mean, I've done it. I, I'll go back 10 years in the past mm -hmm. and just replay. Oh, I wish I would have done this differently, like a business situation. You know, and that's in the past, you know, but I like what you said about learning from those mistakes, right? And not viewing it as a, a failure, but viewing it as learning experience. And then how can we apply that to and not, and not future? Judging, not judging ourselves so hard. Like we're, sometimes we're our own worst critic. Like mm -hmm. actually going, okay, and mourn it for 90 seconds, maybe 90 minutes at max. Yeah. Move on. Right. Because yeah. it's not final. Yeah. Like some people yeah. need to learn, like get emotionally healthy. Like I did this, this running and got very physically fit. Mm -hmm. I know everyone listening can tell that I'm very physically fit. <laughs> um, you sound fit. Um, yes. You just sound fit. <laughs> but some people actually need to lose some emotional pounds. Yeah. That's why they're not successful yeah. is because they, they need to lose some emotional calories, some emotional pounds, mm -hmm. some emotional baggage because their feelings get in the way yeah. of, them, of them truly discovering the success and the breakthrough that they really want to discover. Mm. And actually... You know, the only things that really bring people fulfillment, especially entrepreneurs, because most entrepreneurs are growth minded people, mm -hmm. is actually growing. The only way you yeah. grow is to go through challenges. Yeah. David Goggins says on the other side of suffering is greatness. That's you know, awesome. He also says you do yeah. something hard every single day. Something mm -hmm. challenges you. So these wow. runs challenged me. And there was, there was a, you brought up failure. So let me like tell you guys an interesting story. So on Thanksgiving yeah. day, 2022, I got up at one in the morning to run this marathon so that my wife went <laughs> wait, wait a run? second <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, you ran all of them was in the middle of the night the only <laughs> time you had <laughs> it's the only time you just didn't sleep that's how you did I it did okay sleep and I, all right i'm I, taking notes don't sleep <laughs> i valued and not get a divorce because i missed thanksgiving dinner so i knew if i get up at 1 a.m okay i could finish by a certain time and still make it with enough caffeine to thanksgiving lunch be okay <laughs> And so I thought, here's my idea. I'm gonna, I thought, I'm going to find a thousand things to be thankful for. I quickly realized mm -hmm. I don't think I know of a thousand things. You know, so wow. I'm thinking, you know, for the colors, I mean, songs, I mean, it was crazy. But I got in my head and thought, what if I could be grateful mm -hmm. for the hardest challenges I've ever faced in my life from as far back as I can remember? Mm. So I literally took like several hours and went back in my mind from as mm -hmm. a kid, from yeah. being adopted which that's not a failure, but I'm just saying, I'm going back to the hard times of my life from, mm -hmm. you know, not making this team or not getting this grade or not getting this award or not getting that job or, you know, or even just as far back as I can remember from a kid to a teenager to, you know, a, a newlywed to college and, and graduate work and then to, to, you know, the ministry work, to the business work. And I discovered <laughs> that when you can be grateful for your, deepest failures, your most vocal critics in your darkest times, you're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. nothing in the world that can stop you. If, mm -hmm. you turn, if you can be grateful for the things that you may perceive as failures, then you're unstoppable. Wow. And that was really like, that was a like, I think a life changing moment for me in the midst of those runs. That's when I am on Thanksgiving. By yourself. I mean, you're just running for hours alone. <laughs> By myself alone. And it and, got scary at times. And it was probably cold, it was, right? It was crazy cold. Wow. It was crazy cold. And I had cars almost hit me at times. Oh my you know, gosh. So how long did it take you to run your, I mean, obviously if you're doing it and you know, people talk about like a sprint pace versus a marathon pace, but you're doing like a marathon of marathons. Yes. <laughs> so how long, like what was your average marathon time? Would you say? I would say probably if I had to average them all out, it'd be five and a half hours. There was one day I was at 102 degree fever and I still ran. I had the worst, Whoa. I had the worst Imagine the worst things that can happen to you when you're sick and have mm -hmm. a fever. Mm -hmm. Just let your mind go there. And that was going on. <laughs> oh, wow. And so and that day took nine hours. Oh, it was wow. Like crawling, it felt like. Um, wow. But, you know, I had an ultra marathon mindset. So mm -hmm. ultra marathons is any distance over a marathon. Mm -hmm. And it really is a subculture of itself. Mm -hmm. I, th I think ultra runners are even cooler than marathoners. My personal wow. opinion. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, but so I, and I also, so I knew it was going to be a slower pace intentionally so I could run mm -hmm. the next day. And I also knew that I needed time to, you know, eat and, you know, and, and because you have to, you have to constantly take in so much stuff. Mm. And I also knew that I was going to try to keep my heart rate between the, for the runners get this. So anyone who's not a runner, they may go, but my heart rate had to stay like in a high one zone one and a low zone two because mm. recovery takes a lot less. So okay. there was a, there was a method to this ins insanity. And it was my also running by my heart rate, which even for business owners mm -hmm. and entrepreneurs, 
you know, we have mental, I'd say we have mental zones, just like there's heart zones. Mm-hmm. If you use five, if I, in, in a running zone, five is the fastest pace you can run. You can do it for maybe 100 meters, maybe 200 meters. Mm-hmm. But you can't do that for, you can't do that very many times. One of the reasons why some entrepreneurs don't succeed is they, they stay in this zone five mentally, just running, 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 doing it. And it's like, no, 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 you can't keep that pace forever. You have to find a pace that you can keep. Yeah. And so even mentally, emotionally, and definitely physically, you know, What's your zone? So to do 153 days in a row outside from October the 7th to May the 8th, five months, that's how I did it. Wow. Wow. That's incredible, man. You you said something about being grateful for failures. Is that a discipline or, because I think that's a big challenge like for for most people and you you, you try to do it, you know, and maybe you kind of say it, Mm that you're grateful for, but inside, like you're not though, or you wish you could change it, you know, and, and just to truly like embrace those, right. And then learn from them and grow. Like you said, yeah. I, learned, yeah. I learned some of this from John Gordon. John Gordon is like, you know, written tons of successful books, entrepreneur, speaks to sports teams and mm-hmm. power of positive leadership. He talks about just, he goes on a walk every single day, just for an hour mm-hmm. is just is just practicing gratitude. So you you can't be frustrated and grateful at the same time. It's like wow. emotionally impossible. Wow. You can't be grateful and angry at the same time. And wow. so when we can just, and it's a muscle, it's something you have to develop. And you may not always, whatever you focus on, that's where you're, and, and the meaning you give to, that's where your emotions will come to. If I focus on things I'm grateful for, and really think about those things, then the emotions of gratitude will come forth. Yeah. And it's the best way to start your day is to get outside regardless of the weather and just start with gratitude. It really, I mean, there's like scientific studies behind the power mm-hmm. of gratitude. Yeah. The reason why most people aren't grateful, especially entrepreneurs and leaders and parents and you name it, is that they spend their life comparing their life to everybody else. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they become less grateful for what who they are in their journey because they're looking at everybody else. So one of the best things you do in the running principle is you have to learn to stay in your lane. Like for runners, this is, again, I was a runner in high school and run, running marathons, ultra marathons is you have to stay in your lane, focus on what you're doing and really don't pay attention to the runners behind you. Definitely don't. Mm-hmm. And don't even pay attention to the ones in front of you. You've yeah. got to run your race, stay in your lane, focus on what yeah. you're called to do. For business owners, don't even focus on your competitors. That does you no good. Every time you spend focusing on somebody else or something else, yeah. it's time wasted on things that actually bring you life. Mm-hmm. Gratitude. Yeah for the good times, the bad times, ways of life changing. You can give yourself a gift. Here is a, this is a Tony Robbins thing. You can give yourself a gift mm-hmm. of putting yourself in a state of mind emotionally of, of picturing yourself having achieved that big goal you were chasing. Mm-hmm. Like going there in your mind and just picturing what will it feel like when I've done that. Like what will it be like when this podcast hits, you know, a million subscribers, you know, yeah. a million downloads. You know, just, mm-hmm. just what would that feeling be like? What will I be thinking? What, what will be going on? And then go there in your mind and you can give yourself the gift today mm-hmm. of what that day will be like. Wow. And, and yeah. again, it creates, so it's that those emotions, it's what you focus on. Yeah. It seems like you're saying that gratitude, which I, I love this, that gratitude has to be intentional. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people associate maybe gratitude to an emotion or feeling mm-hmm. and we don't really have that much control over our feelings or emotions, right? They're just neurological firings in our brain, <laughs> like that are, are designed to preserve us. We have massive control over our emotions. Emotions mm-hmm. are a result of what we focus on. Sure. That's what they do. Yeah. Now again, you're right. They, they can come many things but like, again, I don't know if you guys meant to go here in the podcast, but since we're talking about running. And no, yeah. all this, no, this is great. A lot of people are not emotionally healthy because they're physically unhealthy. Yeah. You, I mean, mm-hmm. You can't. It's connected. Run. It's mm-hmm. massively connected. You can't even be spiritually healthy and emotionally healthy if you're not physically healthy. Yeah. If you, again, this is no, this is no diss on McDonald's, but if you eat McDonald's mm-hmm. every day for 30 days, you're not you, literally. It, that'll affect the biochemistry of your body and your mind. It'll be, it'll be harder to be grateful. It'll be harder to be. Yeah. Gra- I mean, there's so many. It's your physical health and your emotional health. It, it's all together. Yeah. And so we have to focus. And we have to be aware of those things. Like business owners, if you don't sleep, if you simply don't like one in running these marathons, sleep was my greatest recovery tool. Mm-hmm. If you don't, I know like hustle, hustle culture is like, oh, I sleep two hours. That, no, mm-hmm. like you need to sleep. Yeah. Like you're more likely to get cancer if you sleep less than seven hours a day. 
Mm -hmm. Sleep is a very healthy thing. Yeah. You know, Mm. so there's things that we can do to be better business owners, leaders, parents, what you name it, that we get sleep, what we eat, what we focus on, what we allow in our mind, even wanting to kind of not be around negative people Mm -hmm. is massively helpful. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah, I like this topic because it relates so much to, I mean, I know we're talking about the running and, but the mindset and like what you said about external circumstances, you know, and that's like, that's huge. Just along the lines of like in business, you're like, well, I have a competitor or this product didn't work out or we're going into recession or, you know, economic factors and like, but what you're saying is that's really not it isn't the determining factor, right? If I was understanding what you said. 100%. It's in a, it's internal in us. In the midst of running these marathons, I was part of an event with Tony Robbins called Business Mastery. And I'm sure some of your audience is very familiar with, with Tony or his, his content. Mm-hmm. And he interviewed several entrepreneurs and he, inter- and he interviewed the, the gentleman who founded Lululemon. It was on the same stage with the, with the current CEO of Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. And, and then I, and another lady, I can't remember her name, but because the, the power was the guy that founded Lululemon, eventually the board fired him. Wow. That's terrible. Yeah. You know? But he ended up starting another company and it's all mindset. He, the story of, you know, everyone knows the cliche, but Colonel Sanders, mm-hmm. you know, he had this recipe mm-hmm. and literally was sleeping in his truck in his like retirement years, trying to get people to take this recipe. Mm-hmm. Every great successful entrepreneur has encountered massive setback yeah. that they've been able to overcome. And one of the things I learned in running a marathon every day, and I think this is life changing for life, for business, for anything, focus, do not be, multitasking will destroy you. Mm-hmm. Power of massive focus for a short period of time will take you so much farther than you can imagine. Mm-hmm. And the best thing we can do is focus on today, because if I focus on today, that'll affect tomorrow and the day after. So yeah. in running these marathons, I wasn't fo- when I was on marathon one, I wasn't thinking 153. Mm-hmm. I had a goal in mind yeah. for a Guinness World Record. When I was on marathon 88, I wasn't thinking about a mar- marathon 108. Yeah. I was focused on that mile, that day, that moment, that instant. Mm-hmm. What am I eating today? Well, how much sleep am I gonna do today? Because all yeah. of those things will affect my tomorrow. Mm. If people would go all in on what's right in front of them now, the person they're talking to, on the phone, the pe- people they're texting, the people around them, the, di- the lunch appointment they have, all of that, if they'll go all in and be all there, they'll reap the rewards tomorrow and the wow. day after. But we're so focused on a week, two weeks, a month, three years, I get it, we gotta set goals, we gotta make plans. You reap a harvest where you place an emphasis. Mm-hmm. And I think when you place an emphasis on today, what I yeah. do today affects tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. Well, I love this conversation. I mean, it's so good. We wanna go now into a part of the podcast uh, we ask the same five questions to every guest it's called the exit round mm-hmm. and so uh we want to ask you those questions malachi like lie detector i need to play yeah no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah if you lie we're then, not gonna know if you give us yeah. the wrong answer no, yeah sorry. so it's yeah between you and your conscience so so question number one everyone asked this question and we just wanted to be trendy by asking it what's your all-time favorite business book wow that's actually a really really good question the way i'll tell you this my favorite business book is usually the book I've just finished. Okay. I'm being honest, I'm just being honest, it's usually the book I just finished. And I just yeah. finished reading How to Grow Your Small Business by Donald Miller. I'm a story okay. certified guide. Yeah. This is my simple a coach. Donald just released a book on how to grow your small business. Mm-hmm. I read it just a few weeks ago. It's an awesome book. That's but awesome. I'm, awesome. I'm constantly reading, mm-hmm. whether it be audio books or books. So that, that's, that's the answer to that question. Awesome. Next question. So being an entrepreneur, having different ventures and stuff, what, what percentage of your income w- it would be derived from passive income sources or residual income versus income that's derived from active work, if that makes sense? Yeah. So in my line of work, I have retainer income. That's what I strive for is retainer income, monthly yeah. contracts. I'm effectively growing what Tony Robbins calls a money machine. Uh-huh. You know, mailbox money, as musicians might call it. You know, right. might mm-hmm. call it. Um, I would say right now, because of some of the products I sell as a business simple coach, mm-hmm. I would probably say five to ten percent. Mm-hmm. But the goal, yeah, mm-hmm. is to get all my expenses covered by passive income. 
Yeah. yeah, that's a goal. Every smart business owner needs to create a money machine and create passive income that does replace their active income. Yeah, that's the only way to gain wealth. Yeah, you absolutely. do not gain wealth by additional. You know, you only have so much time, so much money. You yeah. gain wealth by multiplication. So let me let me give you this real quick. I know you're doing the speed round here, but Jim yeah, Rohn, Jim Rohn, one of the most famous, you know, self development gurus of the last many many years, and he was Tony Robbins' teacher. If you want to, if you want to make more money, you have to add more value. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Warren Buffett said, if you the greatest investment you can make, especially in a down economy, is invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you going to be a part of that's going to grow you? What mastermind? What group? What club? What thing are you going to be a part of that's going to grow you? And eventually, you get to a point where anything you, you actually see growing you as an investment, not an expense. Yeah. I've never yeah. regretted spending lots of money on a course or going to a conference. Mm-hmm. In the end, it's helped me every single time. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I 100% believe in that investing in yourself. And then it all starts with active income, right? Yeah. And so you, you you go out and you generate and you make income, but turning that active income into passive income is how you do what we're talking about here on this podcast. That's how you own yeah. your exit. And you need to learn from others that have already done it. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. don't have to go reinvent the wheel. Learn yeah. from others that have already done it, that know the pathway. Absolutely. Turn a decade into a day mm-hmm. by learning from them. Yeah, a hundred percent. I love that. So next question, what's one thing that you wish you could do more of, but your business commitments take time away and you can't do that? I would say for me personally, it would probably be to create more products that I sell mm-hmm. versus clients I serve. That's mm-hmm. a direction I want to move. I know Amy Porterfield used to work for several people and uh, so she made a shift when she started doing her own courses. I definitely think I, I work to help market other people's products and stuff on mm-hmm. social and digital. But for me, I want to eventually create my own you know, resources, books, courses, you name it. Mm-hmm. And you have to overcome the imposter syndrome and realize, hey, I'm an enthusiast. I'm an, I mean, I'm expert at some things, but I'm willing to say I'm an enthusiast in a lot of things and do that. That's right. Yeah. That, but I, you know, honestly, because I learned this in the run, in mm-hmm. the running, that it's not that I don't have enough time. It's that's never anybody's reason for doing or not doing anything. It's how am I investing my time, and that's right. an active choice I make. Right. So I, I don't think I can sit back and say, "Well, I just don't have enough time." That's really never a true statement for anybody. We right. all have time. It's how we choose to invest. How we choose to use yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. How we Fourth question: it. If you could go back in time, let's say, to you, you know, first business you started, w- would you change anything or what would you do differently so that you could be prioritizing your your time freedom, you know, and at the same time as building that business, you know? Because as entrepreneurs, we can get so busy with okay. that, right? And consumed by that. Well, again, I'm gonna go back to the writing for a second here. Yeah. And I'm gonna say this to you guys and say it to the audience. You, you need to invest in your health. The greatest resource you have is your emotions. Mm-hmm. Not even so much your time. Time, time is right there. But again, if you're physically unhealthy, mm-hmm. your business will suffer. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. too busy to work out. I'm too busy to run. I'm too busy to do whatever. I'm too busy to eat right. Right, and your business will suffer. Mm-hmm. There's no way around it. Mm-hmm. Energy comes from our life, from our cells, our bodies, and energy mm-hmm. is what's mm-hmm. going to move you forward. Emotional energy to move you forward. And yeah. so I would say, for me, going back, I would have made physical fitness and personal growth from day one. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I kind of came onto the personal growth, self-development pathway yeah. later, later on. Later on the journey, I would have done it from day one. I would have mm-hmm. got a coach from day one. I would have yeah. got myself around people mm-hmm. who knew more than I did and paid for that and asked them questions to teach me from day one, rather than try to go mm-hmm. it alone thinking I could save a few dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they're actually, I mean, yes, information is free. Mm-hmm. The insight though, valuable you need it yeah and the world is drowning in information but it's starving for wisdom yeah and so i would from day one invest and in, invest in growing get myself in groups of other people that are further down the road than i am mm-hmm. that are going the direction i want to go and learn from them yeah and then honestly i mean this i'm gonna i'll preach this and preach this and preach this physical fitness and health emotional fitness and health yeah even spiritual yeah. fitness health is so critical you will not ultimately be successful you know if you have 10 million dollars in the bank and you've got cancer mm-hmm. you can get people let me go back to this and again I'm, I, I use tony robbins so i can see tony robbins a coach mm-hmm. a healthy person mm-hmm. has many wishes an unhealthy person has one wish yeah and that's to be healthy mm-hmm. wow wow that's powerful. That's really powerful. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. 
So last question in the exit round, what is a compelling strategy, a strategy that compels you to creating passive income mm -hmm. that then would help generate financial freedom that would give you the freedom to come and go from your business? Sure. The strategy is always going to start with uh, your mindset first, your strategy second, your, your, mm -hmm. so why do you want to have passive income? Mm -hmm. Like, I think people got to realize why, what do you want in your life that necessitates creating passive income? Yeah. Do you want generational wealth for your family? Do you want to take the vacations of your dreams? Do you want your time freed up? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you are, you're not really a business owner until you can take a step back from your business and still, it still operates without you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you're just a business operator until you're able to take a step back and be a business owner where it's operating without you. Yeah. So, but mindset and why you do it is actually, again, I know it, I know it sounds cliche ish, mm -hmm. but it really is simple. When you have a strong enough why that makes you want to run up that mountain, <coughs> you'll do it every time and you will mm -hmm. accomplish that. There is no such thing as try. You don't try to have passive income. You either have passive income or you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you do because you have a compelling enough why. Yeah. And so I would now. That's the uh, mindset part of it. The strategy part of it is people need to learn to invest. Mm -hmm. There's no other way around it. Mm -hmm. yeah. The wealthiest people, you know, think and grow rich mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. Napoleon Hill. It really comes down to people that learn to invest. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whether it be real estate, stock market. I mean, I've had, I've had some bumps in the crypto world. Yeah. I'm still an NFT fan. <laughs> Gary V, NFTs, V Frank, I'm still there. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and people yeah. need to learn to invest and they need to learn to invest in early age. This is not something they're going to teach you in school. Mm -hmm. I'm teach you, they're not going to teach you in high school. Mm -hmm. Right. Learn in college. Totally. You need to learn to invest. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so awesome, man. Thanks for sharing and being with us today. And so much of it was about like our mindsets, you know, yeah. mental health, emotional health, physical health, which is just so relevant to entrepreneurs and to business because that, you know, it's it's your core of like who you are, and then that that like carries through to like your your work, your business, you know, and yeah. has a positive or a negative effect. So I'm I'm personally super inspired, and yeah, thanks so much for joining thanks us. For yeah, no, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm thinking if you work yourself into the ground, then by the time you achieve the financial freedom or time freedom that you have, you don't have the health and the ability to enjoy it. And so right. I think focusing on all those things, that's that's my big takeaway. So thank you, Malachi, again, for being here with us on, on The Exit. And uh, we look forward to maybe having you again as a guest in the future. Awesome. Thank you so awesome. much. Thanks so much. All right. All right. See ya.